review u and w is a subspace of a v and is the dimension of v is a finite now you can just write it as n and our uh, v0 is the intersection of u and w and we extended it on u with this v0 in it the notation I use is u prime right you can extend from one subspace to the full subspace using this direct sum called basis extension theorem and w is v0 plus uh, o plus and w prime so you know the sum what condition makes this um, direct sum between these two things? What condition um, allows the sum to be a direct sum? Intersection being trivial, right? Not empty. Not, not empty. <laughs> it has to be trivial. I, I think I misspoke. I hope you what you meant by this. All right, what is the conclusion then? Do I remember the conclusion? The usual sum, u plus w, right, is written as what? u and w, both of them has u0 in there, right? u has um, that u0, v0, sorry about that. v0 is the subspace in there, right? It's intersection of u and w, so this is supposed to be comma. So v0 is viewed as subspace of u. And that's the common part, so the remaining part is a u prime and also w prime. So that was the theorem. Okay? From there, you can calculate the dimension. How do you calculate the dimension of u plus w? Dimension of v0 dim plus dimension of u prime plus dimension of w, w, w prime. That's how the dimension works and if, whenever it's a direct sum. Okay? So I would like to explain it here today. Here's a proof of this theorem. You start with a u plus w first, right? And you replace this u with what we know. u plus um, u is v0 plus u prime. So I can write v0 plus u prime. I'm not writing this o plus in here. Okay? All I care here is about just the plus. It's about, well, is that okay? Not, not putting the direct sum symbol? All right. Yeah, it's it's what it is is the same as a set is the same thing. Direct sum just indicate additional property on that, so it's all right. Here's a v zero plus w prime. Is that okay? All right. Sum is associative. You can just mix up some any way you want. No need to repeat this v zero v zero. Right? If v zero v zero appears as element wise, you can put it as a another element of v zero. So is that all right? If I put just like this u prime it makes perfect sense no contradiction you can it's commutative and associative no problem we just don't know about direct sum right when you enter the direct sum you have to think about two things at a time so I'm gonna think about these two things at a time right so I can group it here is that alright associativity so let's think about v0 and u prime is this the direct sum is it, that's the definition of a direct sum, right? So we can enter direct sum easily here, v0 and u prime in here, right? Now next thing is a w prime. Now you have to just take care of this one as a direct sum, correct? That's all you have to do. So now, I already explained it last time that you can't just look at this one doesn't intersect and that one doesn't intersect. You have to look at this entire thing and you have to show these two things doesn't intersect. So. Let me give you a little bit of time to think about why is this space does not intersect W prime. Let's think about that. Maybe I'm going to help you a little bit. This V0 direct sum U prime has a different name, simpler name. That was just uh, U here, right? That was U. So I'm going to just replace it with a U and plus W prime. All you have to explain now is that why intersection of u and w prime is trivial. Then it becomes a direct sum. Once it's all direct sum, you can lose the parenthesis. So think about it. Something that is in u, right? Something that is in w prime. We go to this. Also, 
in a bigger set, if it is W prime, isn't that in, in the W anyway? If it is in W prime, it's in the W, right? So whatever is in here is in U intersection W, right? So what is that known as? V0, right. Whatever that is in here is in V0. Did I argue it correctly? If you pull something out here, it's in a bigger set called V0, right? One element in here is in a V0. So what is the next argument that allows you to conclude that that element that we're looking at here actually is 0? So that element I'm going to call, so let me write that down in here, that this is here. So I pulled out, the argument is summarized as follows. If I pull a vector v in, in here, the vector v is inside there, right? It's in u anyway, w prime is a bigger, um, w is bigger, so the v is inside that v0. v is in, what is it, v0, is that right? And also v is in w prime, right? What is the relationship between v0 and the w prime in here? They're making a direct sum to the w, right? Therefore, they intersect trivially. So that thing is a trivial. So v is a force to be a trivial vector. Is that right? So the look around and the containment, you'll be able to logically, not easy, but it is a simple logical statement, will get you the zero vector. All right, so what did I prove? U and W prime intersects trivially. Anything is a zero vector, right? Yeah, anything is a zero vector. Okay, therefore, you intersect a direct sum of W prime, and U is already a W prime, a direct sum form of that, and therefore V zero direct sum U prime direct sum W prime is explained. Okay? And you can extend it, this idea carefully one at a time to the three vector spaces and four vector spaces like that. All right? So let me just give you the answer to the challenging problem you were doing last night with that one. U1, U2, U3. You remember this three vector space? And remember the notation of U1, 2, U2, 3, U3, 1 intersection? And the hint I suggested that um, all the intersection defined as a U0 um, also introduce complementary part from U1, 2, U2, 3, U3, 1. Okay? This is U0 direct sum U1, 2 prime makes U1, 2 and things like that. And further, you can pull out a contradict um, complementary part. U1 as a this one is involved and one is involved there. So it's U1, 2, U3, 1. This is not direct sum, but sum involves all the things that is one in there. You can um, write down the remaining part in this fashion. And then um, here's the following formula. U1, U2, U3. In general, if we put them all together, what happens is that U0, intersection of all three things, and intersection of these two things, but the complementary part, you kind of remove that all the three intersections, U1, 2 prime, U2, 3 prime, and U3, 1 prime. And you can show these are all direct sum in generality. And you can find the example for the rest of the part, none of this thing uh, direct sum work. So you can only extend it to like this. element of a u1, 2, and u3, zero, u3, 1 is actually u0 because it's in u1 and u2, it's in u3 and u1, right? Therefore, it's in u1 and u2 and u3. Therefore, it's inside u0. So u0 is the intersection of these two. But in general, it works out like this. 
you can this is a basic extension theorem you go all the way down to smallest intersection structure to next level of intersection structure you have some statement you can write it down and the, the part that is causing a problem is this guy here these guy can be anything to mess up any you know nice uh, attempt to the dimension formula you try to write it down so it's in, in this generality but I thought if you start with one example with one zero 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 and zero one zero you can build up one at a time to discover this one it was fairly challenging at this stage I'll do I'll be as generous as possible <laughs> that was great I, I knew this was a lot more challenging and then other problems that was a thing um, so I'm just not going to go into any more to that so let me um, introduce another important theorem result here dimension of the sum of these things so let me use this notation if this is alright k going through 1 through n these are all um, subspaces is that okay this u1 plus u2 plus u3 I use this notation in the homework okay so this is not direct sum right it's just the sum it is less than or equal to the dimension of individual thing added later okay think about dimension of u1 plus u2 plus u3 is always less than or equal to dimension of u1 plus dimension of u2 plus dimension of u3 okay and those false statement about the relationship between these two things there is an, an inclusion exclusion so we don't have equality statement but there's always no matter how many components involved there's always nice this statement you're always overdoing it here that's what it says right and this actual dimension all right the proof this one um, I think the um, what is it induction works really well let me ask you this question we're gonna do this induction on n so for fixed n what kind of u1 u2 u3 u you know up to un you consider doesn't matter right? statement is just about n for all the u's that you know that goes like that so it's a um, very different nature of um, induction that you learn in the beginning of the proof courses all right so what is the base case you think we should consider forgot to record it I don't know where I stopped but what is the uh, exact formula u1 plus u2 right dimension u2 then what minus inclusion exclusion dimension of u1 intersection u2 right okay this this holds for two vector two vector subspaces right does not hold for three three space three subspaces and so on um, but it looks just like a Venn diagram of counting number of sets in there so what do you want to do next we have this thing here right hand side looks like dimension of u1 plus dimension of u2 that's what we want to just drop this this one and enter this inequality correct so it's less than equal to the whole thing dimension u1 plus dimension u2 this is what we want right how do you drop this dimension is a positive or zero right and you're subtracting it from it therefore it's you know smallest possibility subtracted off make gives you the maximum is that okay yeah. I kept all that thing if you subtract a zero the smallest possibility subtracting off all the other cases dimension one dimension two is actually smaller than this one therefore this inequality is true correct the basic argument so we took care of um, n equals two so we um, let's suppose this is a key thing the statement what is the statement you have to think about a statement is true for some n such as n equals 2 n equals 200 and you want to go from there to the next level 201 and things like that statement is the following for that given n it doesn't matter what your u1 and u2 are this is always true that's the statement right n is special but u1 u2 those are not special it's arbitrary 
Okay. Now the statement is that let we want to prove uh, u1 through un plus 1 be subspaces, correct? And we want to consider this statement, and it's true. Okay. The induction goes like this: you group the first n of them as a one space. Let w be sum of all that spaces up to u n. And consider dimension of u1 through un plus 1. You rewrite it, regroup it, w, go all the way up to un, and one last one, un plus 1. Is that right? Then, what is the next step? Well, you, do you want to do inequality here and equality here at this stage? Two components, right? Two components. We can do equality. We can do inequality as well. We established this case two case, right? So is that right? If I write it here, this dimension is less than the dimension of W plus dimension of UN plus 1. Right? We prove that anytime if you have two subspaces, that is true. Okay? Right. So we got that. And what is the next step? We're not going to touch that. That one appears... It's a part of a conclusion in here, right? One dimension of un plus one. And we want to expand this one, right? The statement is that if you have n sum n's, the inequality is true. As long as you have n sum n's, inequality is true. So I can replace this dimension w, which is u1 and u2 all the way up to where? un. It's n sum n's, right? The statement is true for any time you have n sum n. Therefore, this one is less than dimension of some of the dimension of individual sum n. So here is a dimension of u1. Go all the way up to dimension of un plus this one kept in there, dimension of un plus 1. Is that right? When you enter, go from here to there, what is the clause you write in the induction? you use induction hypothesis. I remember some of you sometimes do the induction and never use the induction hypothesis. Either your argument is wrong or your, your proof is not really induction. You have to use this induction hypothesis by induction hypothesis. Where do I, did I use induction hypothesis? And some end folded in like this through inequality. Okay? Any question? Um, that's that. That's one nice result it have. Um, we can use this one into following nice corollary concerning the direct sum. Here's a corollary is the following. If the dimension of the sum of these vector spaces, k equals 1 through n, is actually equal, not less than equal, it's actually equal to sum of the dimensions, Then what do you think the conclusion is? In general, this is less than or equal to, right? Because um, this is overdoing it. And there is a lot of overlap, like if you treat it as a... Right, close, right. But these are not vectors. It's not little vk, right? Right, you have to translate your correct statement to in the context of a subspace. Right, forms a direct sum. This u1 and u2 has no overlap, so it's such that you know um, there is no overcounting, right? So the conclusion is that this u1 through all the un is actually the direct sum all the way up to un. Well, that's nice, nice condition to have, right? And it's back and forth, if and only if. Actually. But I'm going to only show the one direction. Uh, using induction. It's a little bit more tricky, but it's still fun to, to do that. Let's try. Induction on n. Is that right? What is the base case? Two sum n's. 
it's always a better thing to do because going from one to two was a whole lot of theorem. So skip. We already did that. So let's do that. Dimension u1 u2 is equal to dimension of u1 dimension of u2, right? Now we want to conclude what u1 and u2 makes a direct sum. What do we know about this one? We have some exact formula, right? Dimension of u1 plus dimension of u2. What is that? Minus dimension of u1 intersection u2, right? But it is set to that one. That's the condition. So what is the conclusion here? Intersection is dimension is 0, right? Therefore, it's a trivial intersection. There's no non-trivial vectors. So u1, u2 intersects trivially. Theorem 1.9, something like that. It says um, u1 and u2 makes a direct sum. Correct? That's great. So the next thing is that um, suppose the statement is true. And you think about what that statement is. What is that statement? If you have n sum n equal to the sum of the dimension, you can always conclude that n sum n is a direct sum. The n sum is a direct sum. All right? Doesn't matter how your sum n look like as long as n, n is true. So we start with, we consider n plus one thing, b subspaces, right? then we're going to group it in the same way, u1, all the way up to un. Okay? We don't know if this is a direct sum or not. Only thing we know is that this one, a subspace, I, I was wrong. Um, I have to put some conditions in here. So I'm going to do like this. The statement structure is that if this happens, this is a conclusion. So we have to assume this one is a subspace is such that what am I supposed to put here? This condition is satisfied. Then all you have to prove is that there is this direct sum statement, right? That's the structure of the statement. All right, so we have dimension of k going through 1 through n plus 1. uk is equal to sum of the dimension of uk, k going from 1 through n plus 1. If we have this n plus 1 subspaces with this condition and using induction hypothesis and whatever um, that doesn't violate the um, what is it, chain of reasoning and you have to prove that um, these n plus 1 is a, what is it, direct sum. Okay? And then uh, next to, to uh, apply the induction hypothesis, I'm going to call the w to u1 for un and right um, left hand side of this equation like this dimension of w plus u n plus 1. Is that right? Then what can you do about this one? So far we only know um, I think the inequality holds. We have exact statement in here, right? Because it's a two sum end. But I, I did it earlier. It's inequality to sufficient to conclude. So here we have two choices here and we're going to do equality and equality but I'm using inequality. What is inequality here? Dimension of w plus dimension of u n plus 1 um, is greater than the dimension of the sum, right? Okay? But this one is equal to actually this whole thing. So I'm going to write it here dimension of Ah. is equal, we suppose that's equal, so it's a dimension of u1 all the way up to dimension of un plus dimension of un plus 1. Is that right? So that one is less than that one. That's, that's the situation. So what happened here? This one and that one cancel. You see that? And we have a statement that dimension of u1 all the way up to dimension of un 
is less than dimension of W. You see that? But the corollary says that W is the sum of this thing, right? The corollary says that um, if you actually add all the dimensions that, uh, individually like this, you usually overdo it, right? Therefore, this is bigger than there's a sum and then doing the dimension later. Remember that part? That was exactly the statement of the theorem. This is a corollary to that. So, but this is not quite the squeeze theorem, but it is kind of sandwiched in there. So you concluded what? Dimension of W is actually equal to that. Dimension of U1 all the way to dimension of UN. Okay? So that's why I switched to the inequality that was nicer than dealing with intersection of W and UN plus 1. It's confusing. But you don't you don't know that until you go through and then you know polish your proof like that. So that's very nice. Uh, we got this statement and somebody have any any idea what to do with this one? How is this at the end of induct induction goes? Induction hypothesis. Induction hypothesis. Isn't it n sum n, right? n sum n, the dimension, is equal to the dimension of the whole sum, right? Then what is the conclusion? The statement is true. What is the statement saying? If, if so, it's a direct sum. W itself, we didn't know at the beginning it was a direct sum, but now it's a direct sum. Okay, so now we know W is U1 direct sum all the way up to UN direct sum. And what is the clause you put here? By induction hypothesis. Okay. All right. Next thing you have to show is that why is this W and UN plus 1 is a trivial then W and U N plus one is a direct sum, and then you can lose the whole thing, right? Um, I think it's from this hypothesis they're saying, same thing here, so why is that? Since direct sum, W, U N plus one, what was this? We assume this is direct, um, well, with that, all that, so we have W one, using this one, you can enter, um, well, we assume this whole thing is the same, right? So I'm not using any of this. This is assumption. U of W plus 1 and all that thing is the same. So here's W. UN plus dimension of UN plus 1. But from this result, we recognize this is exactly dimension of W, right? So it's a dimension of W plus dimension of UN plus 1. But this is supposed to be dimension of W plus dimension of UN plus 1. Minus what? Dimension of W intersection UN plus 1, right? So this one must be again 0 because equating that, you conclude this isn't a trivial intersection. Altogether, we prove that W itself is a direct sum and altogether is a direct sum to UN plus 1. Then you can lose the parenthesis and become all UN plus 1. All right? So you don't have nice, usually, the general statement about the dimension of many, many sums like that. In that regard, and this is a pretty good condition to guarantee, allows you to guarantee that things are direct sum. All right? And direct sum is important. That's what they're doing for the rest of the book. You are given a vector spaces, linear map allows you to consider lots of subspaces and you want to figure out uh, how the direct sum behaves nicely under the linear maps. Okay? So that's it. Sorry for going over a little bit.